What's up guys welcome to another video at Movement Mechanics. Today we are going to talk about bioenergetics. So there are three major energy systems in the human body which provide us energy for our day to day activities as well as athletic activities. In this video we are going to understand everything about the energy systems. So let's dive deep inside this topic and understand some movement mechanics. Before we start understanding the energy systems, we need to understand a concept which is known as ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is the primary source of energy in the human body. All the energy systems strive towards production of ATP so that they can provide energy to the human body for all the activities it undergoes. The number of ATP produced and the rate at which the ATPs are produced differs from energy system to energy system and which energy system is utilized for production of ATP depends upon the intensity and the duration of the activities. So the three major energy system which we are going to talk about are the phosphogen system, the glycolytic system and the oxidative system. So the first energy system which we are going to talk about is the phosphogen system. The phosphogen system provides us energy for very high intense activities but for lower duration. Hence, the number of ATPs produced by this system is going to be low but the rate at which ATP is going to produce is going to be on the higher side as compared to any other energy system. This energy system highly depends upon the creatine levels in the muscle. Higher the creatine levels, better the functioning of this system. Lower the creatine levels, uh, worse the functioning of this system. This system utilizes a single reaction which is known as a creatine kinase reaction because creatine kinase is the catalyzer of this reaction for the energy system. The reaction is as follows, ADP plus CP catalyzed by creatine kinase gives us ATP plus C. Here AD ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate, CP stands for creatine phosphate, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, C stands for creatine. As you know that the amount of creatine in the muscle is limited, hence the ATP produced by the phosphogen system is also going to be limited. So as compared to any other energy system, the ATP production by the phosphogen system is going to be at a faster rate but the number of ATP produced by this system is going to be on the lower side. Moving towards the glycolytic system from the phosphogen system, this system provides us energy for moderate intense activities and for moderate duration which is 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Now this system utilizes uh, important macronutrient which is carbohydrate for energy production. In order for me to explain the process of glycolysis thoroughly, I need to share my screen so that you can understand each and every aspect of glycolysis. Alright guys, I hope you are able to see my screen over here. As you can, as I just mentioned that carbohydrate is an important factor in production of energy or ATP from glycolysis. So once carbohydrate enters into the body, it is converted into blood glucose or stored in the form of muscle glycogen. Now these two pathways are going to be very tricky in formation of ATP via the uh, glycolytic system because the number of ATP is produced by blood glucose and muscle glycogen differs because of this, this step which is the hexokinase reaction. Now the let's say the glycolysis begins from blood glucose. What happens uh, is once it begins from blood glucose, the blood glucose needs to be converted into muscle glycogen and this process is called as phosphorylation. Now in order to phosphorylate blood glucose to muscle glycogen, there is a wastage of ATP over here. Now what happens if it is opposite that the pathway or energy pathway production via the glycolysis is from muscle glycogen, these, this step, hexokinase step is prohibited and you directly move on to the next step which is the rate limiting step and it cannot be prohibited at all because if this step doesn't happen then the energy production via the glycolysis is not going to happen. So uh, it is very critical that you have good nutrition status if you want muscle glycogen to be your main pathway and not blood glucose. So the second step of the glycolysis is basically phosphofructokinase. Now phosphofructokinase is the rate limiting step because if this step cannot be prohibited as I just mentioned and this step also requires ATP. If glycolysis begins from blood glucose molecule, the gross ATP resynthesis is going to be 4 but the net ATP resynthesis is going to be only 2. On the other hand, if it begins from muscle glycogen, then the gross ATP is going to be again 4 but the net ATP resynthesis is going to be 3. 
So in order, as I just mentioned, in order for you to have optimal level of ATP production, you need optimal level of muscle glycogen and hence carbohydrate loading is very critical for having good glycogen levels in the muscle. As you can see, there is something called as pyruvate at the end of the process. Now pyruvate is the end product. Okay, pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis. Now depending upon the intensity and presence of oxygen, pyruvate can be shuttled into the mitochondria for undergoing Krebs cycle and here the aerobic system comes into the picture. But if the intensity is high and there is no oxygen present at that time pyruvate is converted into lactic. Now this concept of lactic is very interesting. So if you want a separate video on that, make sure you drop that in the comment section so that I can make a very interesting video on lactic and other components related to lactic acid. Moving forward that what if this pyruvate is shuttled into the mitochondria? The aerobic system or the oxidative system comes into the picture and there are three major aspects for that. One is the intensity, one is the duration and one is the presence of oxygen. So now let's move forward towards the oxidative system so that we can understand the last energy system of this video. The oxidative system is the only system which needs the presence of oxygen in order for energy production. This system provides us energy for very low intense activities and for longer duration which is beyond 3 minutes, for example marathon running. This system is greatly linked with the glycolytic system because the fate of pyruvate is decided based on the intensity and if the pyruvate is shuttled into the mitochondria, the oxidative system comes into the picture. Now what happens when the pyruvate is shuttled into the mitochondria? It undergoes Krebs cycle. Now, depending upon from where that pyruvate came, whether it was blood glucose or muscle glycogen, the number of ATP produced via the Krebs cycle is going to vary. Now, the Krebs cycle rotates twice. So, if it is the pyruvate was from blood glucose, then the total ATP production is going to be 40 minus 2 because of the hexokinase reaction. On the other hand, if it was from muscle glycogen, then the total ATP production is going to be again 40, but the net ATP production is going to be 39, which is going to be one more. Now, this is the capacity at which the oxidative system can produce ATP. That is, the rate of ATP production is going to be lower, but the number of ATP produced by the oxidative system is always going to be high because this system needs to provide energy not only for athletic activities, but also for day-to-day -day activities. Our resting energy requirement are fulfilled by the oxidative system itself. Now the oxidative system does not only depend upon carbohydrate but uh, it derives energy or ATP production from fats and proteins as well. Proteins co contribute only when the activity is prolonged beyond 90 minutes but carbohydrates and fats are two primary sources of uh, energy production from the oxidative system. In elite uh, endurance runners, there is something called as glycogen sparing effect. That means the uh, energy produced by the oxidative system is primarily from fats and not from carbohydrates. So they spare carbohydrates for the later stage of the marathon where they need to increase the intensity. At that time, the, uh, the stored glycogen can be utilized for increasing the intensity and uh, uh, making that difference in the race. So this is something which is very critical in terms of nutrition. If you have got good nutrition and your conditioning is good, then fats can be your primary source of energy and not carbohydrates and you will have an advantage over the other athletes. So protein also contributes but beyond 90 minutes and protein contribution comes into the picture when the chain of fats is going to be broken down. At that time if carbohydrate is not going to provide you energy then protein has to step in and provide you energy for a certain amount of time unless and until that fat chain is broken down. Once that fat chain is broken down you are going to get lots of ATP because there are lots of triglycerides in the body and those triglycerides have got immense amount of ATPs which can be provided with the help of the oxygen system thank you guys for watching the video till the very end but before you go make sure you hit subscribe the like button and the notification bell icon so that you never miss a video whenever I'm uploading a new one if you have got any doubts or any comments regarding this video make sure you drop them in the comment section as well all right guys see you in the next one